Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mupo and Friends. We are Emanuela Messina. And I am Michelle Mupo. And we are brought to you all by Mupo TV. And you could catch this show and many others at www.mupotv.com. That's www.mupotv.com. And if you are looking for a career in the entertainment industry, hit us up at mupoentertainment.com. And also, I have to say, hmm. our shows are really getting leverage out there. We have some really awesome celebrities that are coming on and they're telling us things that they've never told us before. Um, and true. I say that everything because that's what we want to be known for. We yeah. want to be known, tell the dirt now. <laughs> tell the dirt now. I like that. And she's right, guys. They tell us here exclusively on Google and Friends. And we're so honored to hear it too, because I mean, why not? We're pretty cool. I think so. We want to say thank you guys so much for joining us where we love to bring you the celebrities and the entrepreneurs you guys all want to hear about. And I don't know if you guys realize this, but we have a line right now and um, it's based off of a French bulldog. Um, and so cute. It's called the muffin line. And um, we're going to seriously do charity work for dogs out there and find them homes, get them healthy and mm -hmm. make stuff happen. That's one of our things that we do. Plus guys, if you have not downloaded the app, go get your phone, download the app now called Mupo Entertainment on Android or iOS. Oh, look at that magazine. <laughs> this is our magazine. Take a look, Dee Dee Pfeiffer. Big Sky on the back. This is our first issue, which is a collector's. And we're working on the second one, which I'm excited about. So if you want to get a copy of the first one in your hands, go to mobileentertainment.com, check out our store and get your very own hard copy as well. There is a digital, but the hard copy is, you know, it's the go-to. It's the go-to so in my opinion. We're on 144 countries with our app. Yeah. We're in 144 countries, mm -hmm. um, which is crazy because we've really expanded over the past two years, not to mention the fact that we're on Android and iOS. We're on Vimeo, YouTube. Well, YouTube, we don't really use that much. We got to start using it again. Mm -hmm. um, and then we are also in um, Roku Fire Stick through the Vimeo app on Mupo Entertainment. Mm -hmm. That's right. So make sure you guys download it. But before you do that, check out our interview that we have coming up live here. I'm excited for this guy. And I'm going to ask you my question, which I love asking you every single week here. Did you have a Mupo Awesome Week? I always have a Mupo Awesome Week. Did you? I know you had. <laughs> I a, did. You always, you always do too. Like, I think that's do. good. Our energy is very uh, magnetic. You know what yes. I mean? Because it's like, if even if something goes wrong, it's mm -hmm. like, so what? Just brush it off. Like, that's right. Like, what's like Lizzo would say. <laughs> and, um, you know, it is what it is. That's it. Always a lesson to be learned. But you know what? You can't stay in that for too long. So I'm yeah. excited. I'm excited. Um, I'm excited for this next guest. Um, so we are going to take a quick commercial break and we will be right back with our special guest. <laughs> to Mupo and Friends. Our special guest today is an actor, writer, producer, artist, and percussionist. Born in Queens, New York, he earned a Bachelor's of Arts degree from Seton Hall University and began a career path in the corporate world. Making a U-turn into acting, he acted in such highly appraised shows as The Chi, Black Lightning, and On Our Way, the, his latest TV series, Cold and Windy, and his critically acclaimed films, including Black Panther and Maya and Her Lover, which was nominated for the 2021 American Black Film Festival Jury Award. He recently filmed Take the Night about a prank kidnapping gone wrong 
is a thriller that will keep you guessing. Please welcome Shamari Love. Hello, Shamari, and welcome. Hello, How are you? Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. We are very excited. And I want to know right away, what gave you the courage to totally change from the corporate world, you know, and to do performing arts? Yeah, um, I think it, it was literally, it was the it was the thought of the unknown. It was the idea of, you know, what if? Like, what if you do try something different? What if you do something you have no idea about and don't know where to start? So it's the, it's the idea of, like, I had an ability and I believed that I had an ability and that the only way to find out if I could do it is to try it. So it was just that the thrill, the, the idea of the unknown and jumping head first is something that's really what motivated me. Yes. And what had led you to your being cast in Take the Night? So Take the Night, actually, that came around uh, before, right before the pandemic. And it was just one of the normal processes where, you know, just made for breakdowns and things like that. And I actually ended up doing an audition. It was one of my first auditions that was in this medium, like over Zoom or Skype. Um, so I did an audition on Skype. I did a self-tape first, and then I actually ended up doing like my producer session, director session via Skype, which was different for me. Um, but nonetheless, you know, made the best of it, uh, created a situation and, and used the medium um, to make it work for that scene. And one thing led to another and got the call with the opportunity and got on the next thing flying. Awesome. So Shamari, how far would you go for millions? How far would I Being go? Being that you're from the East Coast. <laughs> Uh, but personally, I mean, listen, you know, being from the East Coast, being from New York, you always have like this, you know, by any means necessary. I think really the way that that factors in, in my life, um, it's just what risk are you willing to take? So personally, like I, I'm a big risk taker, I'm a big risk taker and, um, I'm a hard worker as well. So I'll pretty much do whatever I need to do, um, to make it. But I think it, it's more so about, you know, why do I want the millions? Like if there's something motivating me. So if I know there's millions on the table, but I need it because I need to help someone with it or, you know, I want to buy my mom a house, then that's going to be the driving factor or the reason or the, the, the distance that I'll go to obtain it, that it might change. That's a good answer. Yeah. And what would you do if your career was suddenly sides, like a sidelined, uh, like your character, Shannon? Yeah, that was tough. <laughs> that was tough. <laughs> it was, it was, a, it was a journey just to, to really understand, you know, how Shannon even, you know, fell to the place that he did and to come back from that, that would happen to me. I mean, that's like a true test, of, true test of resilience. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't quit. Quitting is never an option. So I think I just figured something out. I figured out another way. Um, I figure out uh, a way to better my situation, kind of like Shannon did. But I'd probably do it in a different way. I probably wouldn't do any heist or anything like that. Hmm. And was there any camaraderie offset, like off the screen that there was in the film? Um, yeah, I mean, there was like Shannon's character and Todd's character. You know, they had camaraderie on camera, but even off camera. Um, you know, Todd played by Brendan Kilcook. Him and I, you know, formed a pretty cool bond. And, you know, we were touch based about a lot of things. He's from out west. I'm from out east. So, you know, him and other characters as well, um, you know, we were able to just form a bond. We spent a lot of time together. A lot of time together in between takes, so you know, definitely, definitely was a camaraderie form. Um, even with the director, all the castmates and the crew, like Antonio Aaron as well. Um, so yeah, there was definitely some camaraderie form. And I have a bit of a deep question: How do you justify characters' actions when you personally disagree with them? Uh, that's a really, really good question. Mm -hmm. um, some of my early training, like I struggled with that, right? Um, struggled mm -hmm. with. You know, we, we, we learn of all these different characters. Some people may view them as monsters. Some people may view them as bad guys. And, and I had the opportunity to, to play a lot of these characters so far that may have had trouble past. And one of the earlier things I learned from my training, from my coach, you know, is just really, when, when you look at a character, you just try to understand their human nature, understand them as a human being. They weren't born that way. They weren't always that way. There is a story. There's something that led them to that point. So the more you understand their story and what lets them get into that point, um, you're able to you better empathize with, with the character itself. And then ultimately your goal and your objective is to just authentically tell that character's story. Hmm. And did you create like entire backstories for all your characters that you did? I have to. Like I said, like it, with, with me, it's like, 
it's it's you don't you, you have no idea who your art may impact. You have no idea who's watching. You have no idea how it may help someone in, in some way. You have no idea whose story that may be parallel to. So I, I try to do as much research as I can. I try to um, create uh, as legit of a backstory and as a, um, a logical of a backstory as possible, um, so that when when we get to that point, when you see like in Take the Night, when you see Shannon entering into that grocery store and you see the thoughts in his mind, you can almost understand, all right, there's something that happened. It, he, he may not want to be doing what he's doing right now, but there's a reason why he's doing it. Um, and you know, what, what, it makes you kind of wonder, like, what did he really go through? So if we can raise that question in the audience and make the audience really ask why and what happened before, then you know that you created a good enough backstory. See, that's mm -hmm. talent. That and is. we're gonna take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with our special guest. <laughs> We are back with Shamari Love. And I want to know what project have you had the most fun doing? Hands down, it's when I was a drummer on Black Panther, original Black Panther. That was, I don't know, I felt like <laughs> we were there um, for some time filming. I'm like, I'm getting paid to do this. We literally, <laughs> it was a party. It was a great time, um, you know, doing things that you love, playing instruments, um, being amongst people. And also enjoyed what they were doing. That was really fun. I really enjoyed that. I have a question. Do you, what kind of drums do you prefer? Yeah, so um, I like Tamas or Slingerlands. Okay, okay, yeah. So I, I traditionally I played uh, African drums. Um, so nice. it's, yeah, the the djembe, and then in in the film I was playing the sabar. Um, but then um, growing up, I also played the marching snare as well. So that was one of the additional drums that I also played. Nice. And has yeah. there ever been a project so challenging that you wanted to walk away? Walk away. That's not really an option. I mean, there's always like struggles. There's always, you know, going to be, um, you know, differences in opinions and different work styles and things like that. But I don't know, like I feel like when, when projects get challenging, you just remind yourself everyone's there for a common goal, um, knowing the reason why you showed up to work that day and, you know, what your long term goal is. And, you know, not I never really want to walk away, but I've definitely been frustrated. I'm human, you know. And uh, I want to know from you, what are some of your favorite films other than your own? Oh, man, I can't even. What? That's not even a fair question. Like, we don't have time, <laughs> I know, we don't have but time I had to ask. <laughs> we don't have time for the list. Um, so many, so many. Um, uh, I guess who's coming to dinner, Sydney Portier, I love it. Um, Passion of 57, Wesley Snipes, I love it. Um, it's a mix of so many different things. Uh, Training Day, Denzel Washington. Like, I love a mix of film noir. I love a mix of drama. I love a mix of action. Um, I'm big on biopics as well. Um, when Chad, the late Chadwick Boseman did 42, the Jackie Robinson story, I love that as well. I mean, it, it, the list goes on and on mm. and on. And do you have any special, um, you know, like some fond memories, very vivid though, of being in Black Panther? Because that's what oh. everybody wants to know. Hold on. One thing I cannot forget. I can't forget Catch Me If You Can. Oh. Leonardo DiCaprio. That was, that's definitely one of my all-time favorites. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, back to your question. Uh, fond memories of Black Panther. Um, I think uh, one, of the, one of the best memories, um, just like when the days would end, when the days would end, we were fortunate enough that like, we had a, a close group that we worked with and like, our musical coordinator um, was really close friends with Chadwick. And we like we'd often, you know, just to get to observe in a short distance the work that they would do. Like when 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 we rapped or when we we're in between breaks, you, you would get to observe the conversations and just see how 
um, the artists themselves thought the thoughts of the character even in between breaks. So getting to see people like that, getting to see people like Angela Bassett, as far as what it could just in that element um, up close in person, and you realize that you know the thoughts aren't that much different from yours. Um, the process isn't isn't that much different for yours, um, and it's it's really inspiring, really. Um, so those are some of the funnest moments. That's really cool. How did the percussions you were familiar with differ from the work you as a drummer in the film? Uh, well, as I mentioned, very early on in life, I started with African drums. And then as I got older, I started playing in like a, a drum corps, essentially, we call it a drum corps. So the in the drum corps, I was playing a marching snare, which is totally different because we're using mostly sticks, right? Um, and then fast forward, so Black Panther, you were back to kind of the roots where you're using your hands um, for the djembe or then for the sabar is just one stick that you're using. Uh, and the shape is very different from uh, traditional drumsticks. Uh, but it's all it's all similar. I mean, it's all it's all rhythm. It's, it's all cadences, um, things of that nature. Hmm. And what classic film or play would you love to turn on, you know, turn on and do like? Wow. Heavy question. What classic film we'll play? Oh man. Um because I see you redoing something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. Well, in terms of plays, August Wilson's seven guitars. Um, that was one of my favorite. Also, August Wilson, Joe Turner's Come and Gone. Joe Turner's Come and Gone, August Wilson. That's probably one of the plays that I, I would love to do one day. Um, films, yikes. <laughs> I love movies. I love movies. Um, it would have to be, it would have to be like training day. But some things you don't you don't want to touch. Like some yeah. things, you know, you just you mm-hmm. did just good the first time around. I mean, if it was if it was never created and we never had that as a template, then that storyline and that character, yeah, sure, I would, I would love to play that character. But um, yeah, I think maybe like Training Day as a film, um, even even Catch Me If You Can, I would yeah, I would actually we should we should do that. We should do like a remake of Catch Me If You Can, a modern day version, um, right? And then we should That'd do Joe cool. Turner's coming on. Yeah, those would be cool. Yeah, that'd be really cool. So, can you elaborate on your statement? Plays help strain your mind's eye mm, yeah um for the exact reason um when when we spoke about you know understanding the character and and being able to paint a picture I think with with stage plays in particular and that statement refers to stage plays. with stage plays in particular you know you're given this text and you're required to create that world right um, granted, there, there's been much development and you get beautiful production design and things of that nature. But when you first encounter this, the text, you have to create this world and your your mind's eye, meaning the creative element, the creative lens, um, it's put into a, a position where it has to account for everything. Mm-hmm. All of the elements around you, all of your senses need to be engaged. You have to creatively put yourself in that time in that setting with those characters um, to literally move through the scene and to visualize what it is the character was thinking and feeling at that time <clears throat> and what led to exact the exact moment before that scene began. So it forces your mind's eye to, to, to create. Amazing, I love that. We're gonna take a quick commercial break and we're gonna be right back. <laughs> with Shamari Love. Now, since you like to reset, you know, with travel, can you please tell us some of your famous places that you like to go to? What? Travel reset? Actually, as a matter of fact, when we're done with this, I'm actually going online. 
I'm looking for the next place. But um, <laughs> some of my favorite places, um, most recently, Turks and Caicos. Turks and Turks is beautiful. Nice. Um, water, like I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm a cancer, so also a swimmer. I love the water, I love seafood, everything like that. So places like that, I love. Turks was great. Uh, they have great golf there, great seafood. Aruba was beautiful. Uh, when I went to Aruba, I scuba dive first time. It was crazy. Um, well, it's Jamaica. Can't forget Jamaica. Uh, it's the homeland. I love Jamaica as well. Um, and then if I go a little further, uh, I've always loved France. I've been there a few times. Food is good. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm like an art buff, so there's always a lot of great art there when you visit. Uh, so those are like some of my top four. Top four. Nice. And you love art, and you've mentioned you paint in acrylics on yeah. canvases. Is there a particular style or subject matter that you gravitate to towards? Yeah, excellent question. Um, <clears throat> particular style would be abstract. Mm -hmm. um, generally yes. abstract painting for me is, um, you know, I did it a little bit in school. I did it growing up, did it in high school, and even took some courses in college, of course, you know, when I got the degree. But you know, as I, as I get older and I travel more and I you know, gather more experiences, painting really becomes therapeutic for me. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I just, I, I let my mind just wander and spill out onto a canvas. And that's, you know, hence why it comes out abstract. I may see one thing, but that's not what I end up with. And then often when I paint, um, it starts as one thing and then it's a process. Like there's times I've done paintings and it took me over a year and a half to complete because the project went through what I was going through life you know, with me. Wow. Yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah. yeah. It's like relate. writing, right? Like anything you do, like you, yep. you wait on it and things influence it in life. And, you know, you have it's, it's a piece of us. Yeah. It's like when you write a song, you'll start it and then come back and then you'll bring another relationship into a song. Mm -hmm. So when someone says, hey, who did you write that song about? I wrote about three or four people. But, <laughs> you know, everyone thinks it's them. Let them think it. You know? Yeah, exactly. Untitled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like. exactly. You exactly. just put all your shit untitled. <laughs> now, after, That's you know, good. producing and directing and acting in Pulse, do you think uh, you'd like to wear more than one hat again? Because I could see you doing it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm working on some things currently. Um, definitely want to lean into that again. Uh, it's a great experience. It only made me stronger as an actor, really. It made me stronger as an actor. Uh, I feel like it made me a better human being also. Uh, you know, wearing different hats and just being able to understand um, things from other people's perspectives. You know, so ultimately, you know, see what everyone brings to the table. And, you know, it's not easy from anyone's seat. Um, so yeah, I would definitely want to tap into that again in the process of working on some things now and I'm hopefully can get them, get them um, underway. And so how do you keep your skills uh, of your craft fresh? What yeah, do you do? good question. Um, so I've been training in like conservatory. So I uh, take an acting class and um, when I'm not in acting class and I'll just go over material, like I'll read stage plays, keep that, you know, minds uh, sharp. Um, I'll watch films old films. I'll try to keep up with some of the newer projects, reading, uh, traveling. Honestly, traveling, even though it's a reset, like I can't stop studying. So um, you, you travel and then, you know, subsequently, like you're studying people. You're mm. studying different cultures. You're studying the way people interact. And believe it or not, like I'll, I'll study people and, you know, I'll be that person for the rest of the day. Like when I go back to my, my hotel or my place that I'm staying, like, I, yeah, I, I, I like that. The guy that was at the fish market today, uh, he has a story. What, what might his story be? And then you just start to paint the picture. You start to think about it. Or well, you might have actually had a conversation with him. And you learned a little bit of something. And so, yeah, between reading, um, staying in acting class, um, studying people, traveling, things like that. People watcher. You're a people watcher. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. No, don't, don't, call it, don't call it that. Don't call it that. No, but not in a bad way, in a good way, because you're really trying to understand who they are and, you know, get that yeah. backstory, right? So Exactly, exactly. Very good. Very good. Yeah. And tell us, is there anything that you have that's coming up? Like what, what up and coming projects do you have? Oh man. So, you know, um, Cold and Windy actually just released um, on WeTV and in all black. So the first episode just came out last Thursday, um, which is pretty cool. So we have uh, some more episodes going. It's going to be a good season. Um, then there's a film coming out uh, on our way. Uh, that we previously talked about um, in that film, I'm playing Othello. Uh, he's a love interest of Jordana Brewster. So that was a pretty, pretty cool film. Um, so excited for everyone to see that. And a couple more things on the way. We can't really talk about just yet, but definitely always working on something. 
We'll definitely promote you any way we can. And we are going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with the conclusion of our interview with Shomari. And we are back with Shamari Love. And before we wrap things up, we have one last question. What are you most grateful for outside of your career? Life. Hmm. Life. I think uh, it's, it's the thing we take <clears throat> for granted most. Uh, the past is behind us. Tomorrow is not promised. Uh, every every day, every day that you know, I wake hmm. up and I get another chance to, to do what I love, just to breathe. Fresh air, you know, see the sunrise, see the sunset. That's it's a blessing. I'm I'm grateful for life. That is yeah. so good. And what Michelle says too, tomorrow's never promised. What is your life today? Day. Every oh, really? day. Every yeah, day. she does. It's That's why like she asked when you said it, because she says it's, it every day. Yeah, I yeah. saw her reaction. I'm like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah, no, because oh, I say so that good. like think about it, man. The more mistakes you make in life, the better you become because mm-hmm. you know you did it already. You understand? Yeah. So never give up with anything you ever do. Ever. Don't yeah. quit. Don't quit. That's it. It has been an absolute pleasure visiting with you today here. And guys, look for Shamari Love in Take the Night on Amazon Prime, Maya and Her Lover on Amazon Prime, or the Urban Movie Channel, The Chi on Amazon Prime, or ShowtimeAnytime.com. Black Lightning on Netflix and Black Panther on Amazon Prime. You can also follow, like, and subscribe to Shamari on Instagram at Shamari Love and at his website, www.shamari.me. And as always, Thank you for tuning in to Mupo and Friends, courtesy of Mupo TV. And you could catch this show and many others at www.mupotv.com. That's www.mupotv.com. And again, follow us on Android and iOS. Download that app. You could also watch us on uh, Roku, Fire Stick, Vimeo, uh, YouTube, and just have fun and do the peaceful thing that you need to do every day. This is true. And this is Emanuela Messina with our host, Michelle Mupo. And until next time, have a Mupo awesome week.